Um, so everyone, welcome to the um, welcome to the webinar. Um, my name is Rachel Lamy, and I get the job of introducing the webinar. So I'm going to give a quick overview of data citation, um, and then I'm going to pass over to um, to Helena at data. Um, from Datacite, who's going to talk about data citation and data repositories. Um, moving on to um, my colleague Patricia, talking about how to cite data in, um, in publication metadata. Um, and then sort of finishing up with, um, with Robin Dassler from Datacite, talking about how you can actually use data citation information um, once, um, once it's been received at Crossref and or Datacite. Um, and then I think we're going to finish up just with a bit of um, time for questions and answers and time for discussions. Um, and my colleague Paul has joined us from the, um, from the support team as well to try to help with those. Um, for questions, um, we've got a question and answer window. So if you want to pop them in there, um, we can take them at the end of the call. Um, and as I said, we will make a recording um, of it and share it with the group so that you can, um, so that you can access it after, um, after this afternoon is done. Um, so apologies for keeping you on mute, um, but we, can, um, we promise to let you, to let you have your say afterwards. So because this is um, because this is a joint webinar, um, I'm going to start by um, thanking um, Patricia Cruz from Datacite for some of the content that I'm going to use to um, to introduce the the webinar today. Um, I've added a link at the end to her presentation from Crossref Live um, 18, and it's a, it's an also a pretty good overview of, of data citation and why it's so important. Um, to talk about sort of the precedence, the, the context for, for why we're talking about data citation today um, and why Crossref and Datacite are collaborating on this, um, there's, been a, there's been a bit of sort of a, a lot of background kind of work and interest on data citation um, over the past couple of years. And I just wanted to start kind of by putting that in context. So one of the first large scale initiatives to establish data citation as a standard academic practice was, um, was the Force 11 Joint Declaration of Data Citation Principles, and that's back in 2014. And that declaration was endorsed by over 100 organisations in the scholarly community, as well as, you know, many, many individuals. Um, and following this agreement on how data citation should be done, many projects follows. So within Force 11, there was the data citation implementation pilot, and that brought together publishers and repositories to put data citation into practice and to work on the, the implementation of the joint declaration of data citation principles. Um, within the context of the um, Research Data Alliance, or RDA, um, a data literature linking group started under the name of Scholix to try to establish a framework for exchanging information about the relationships between articles and data sets. Um, and some of those building blocks um, now feed into projects like Make Data Count and Enabling Fair Data. So um, looking at ways to be able to, to, measure and, um, to measure and to give credit to researchers for citing data. Um, so there's, you know, there, there've been a lot um, of work sort of put into establishing kind of the groundwork about how this could be done. Um, and in really simple terms, data citation is just references to data in the same way that researchers routinely provide a bibliographic reference to other scholarly resources. Again, there's a groundswell of interest in, in sharing data, but they're often not cited clearly and consistently in journal articles and other publications. And so we, we really want to kind of rally the community to try to change that. So why would you be interested in citing data? Um, listed lots of reasons, but if data sets are cons cited consistently and in a standard way, it will make it much easier for the research community to see links between different research outputs and to, um, and to work with those outputs. So it also makes it much easier to see where and how data is being used 
so that researchers can get credit for it. I'm talking here about, um, you know, it, it's, it's nice, it, you know, it's great if, you know, researchers are starting to, to, to share their data or publish papers that they built on it, but you need to be able to find that data in order to, to dig into more depth into the research that they've published. Um, I've talked a little bit about transparency and reproducibility already, um, but making the underlying data available makes it easier to verify and replicate results. Again, I've talk talked about being able to track, measure and count how often and where data is being used so that researchers can get credit for that. And I think those are, you know, those are all, you know, good reasons to do it. That's, that's kind of the carrot in a way. Um, and I think some of the, I'd, I'd hesitate to call it stick, but I think um, now that funders and publishers are, you know, are, are putting policies and um, instructions and I guess even mandates into place about, um, about how data should be shared and used, um, that this it's becoming more important that, that organizations like funders are able to um, are able to, to be able to track and make sure that the, the policies that they're putting in place are, are then being followed. Um, from the publisher side, um, it helps um, it helps support the, the scholarship and extends the, the research. Um, I've put in a, a diagram that, um, that, that we use at Crossref talking about the article nexus. Um, you know, at Crossref very much used to be, okay, DOIs for journal articles and books and, and other content types, but articles um, and any other type of research really don't exist in isolation. So being able to, um, being able to establish firm links between articles and data between the preprints between the review between peer reviews and then further papers that go on to to cite that work ensures that um, you have a rounded picture of the research outputs um, and making sure that data which is a huge component in that um, is is used appropriately um, there's I think from you know working with publishers over the, over the years, um, we absolutely appreciate that it's not just as easy as okay, just stick this information in your XML and, and off you go. We we understand that you know there there are different steps that um, that publishers need to need to take um, in order to you know in order to get to a point where they're able to sort of reliably collect, use, publish and deposit information on links between data and articles. Um, I'm borrowing Helena's wording um, on this, but you know, there are certainly resources that can help um, publishers develop a data policy that includes data citation. Um, so th that, that falls into the not too scary category. And certainly there, there are some publishers that are kind of really um, leading the line on this in terms of um, in terms of how they're how they're publishing and how they're pulling you know how they're um, I guess like promoting the the, the links between the, the article and the data um, and explain to art authors how they should be be citing data as well I guess that's not too scary but I also appreciate that you know instructions for authors are are you know, can be pretty detailed. So making it easier via means of collecting the information in a specific field, um, within a submission system, et cetera, um, can, can sort of prompt authors towards the, um, making it really obvious what the paper that, um, that they're publishing, what the underlying data of that is and where you can find it. Um, the updating internal workflows and instructions to supplier, um, yeah, that falls into the slightly more scary. Um, we understand that publishers have fairly extensive roadmaps with lots of um, lots of things on the to-do list. But again, I think both uh, Crossref, Datasite, and then with other publishers as well, and um, where you know people are happy to kind of share information on how how this has been done. Um, and then um, Patricia is going to talk to this later in the in the webinar, but. Um, then including that information from in the um, in the metadata that you register with Crossref, um, 
that then lets us take that information and then make it available um, via our APIs and via event data further down the line. So hopefully sort of giving us the information means that we can help with the dissemination part of it so that other um, organizations can find the data and link back to the article or vice versa, just helping the content be, be more easily discoverable. Um, Helena, can I pass on to you to talk about the, um, the repository side? Yes, of course. Thank you. So I would like to talk about the role of data repositories in this, because often when we talk about data citation, we talk about uh, references in articles to data sets. So what role can data repositories play in this? Um, and I think the first point I want to make is that the information uh, about an association between an article and a data set can come from both sides. So it can come from the publisher, but it can also come from a data repository. And maybe in an ideal world, we think that authors should always cite underlying data in their article and therefore the publisher should always have the information. But I suppose right now, that's not yet the case. Not all data sets are cited in articles. And also in some cases, the article is available before the data set is made available. So in that case, the publisher can't know about it yet, but the data repository does. Now we also know from conversations with data repositories and some of the previous workshops we've done on this that data citation and making these links available is very important to data repositories. It's something they're already doing a lot of work on. Um, and uh, Rachel and I did a blog post on this a while ago, so you can uh, find more extensive information there. Uh, but for example, ICPSR told us that data citation makes data visible to the research community. Without it, data cannot be accessed for reused or re reproduced for transparency. And GBIF noted that right now, data publisher efforts often risk going unnoticed and the true impact of sharing data remains invisible. So I also wanted to talk about some of the steps that data repositories can take. Uh, and the first step is that they can ask researchers um, who post, upload or publish um, data in their data repository to include associated publications in the data set metadata so that they're aware of this relationship between um, the article and the data set. And we also know that many repositories even do additional curation work um, to really actively discover these links and make these available. And so once a data repository knows about this, the next step is to include these links um, in the data site metadata deposit. And I'll show the instructions for that on the next slide. And one of the reasons why this is really important is if you do that, then publishers can access this information. So in cases, um, where they're not yet aware of this relationship between the article and the data set, uh, they still have the opportunity to link back uh, from the article to the data set, also retrospectively. Um, and in this case, uh, the example you see on the slide is Pangea, um, a data repository in the earth and environmental sciences, uh, shared the information uh, they had about the link between an article and a data set. And now there's a link back from the article to the data set in Pangea. So if we look at how you can actually include this in a metadata deposit, and you're looking now at a, at a postcard we developed together with Crossref. There's also a Crossref version, which we're taking with us to conferences. So maybe you already have one at home, or maybe you'll come across one at the next conference you go to. Um, and what this shows is that data site members who already deposit metadata when they register their DOIs with data site can include three additional fields. And that's basically all that's needed to ensure this link becomes available. And these fields are related identifiers. So in this case, that would usually be the DOI of the article that the data set is asso associated with. Um, then the related identifier type. So in most cases, a DOI and then the relation type, and that allows you um, to specify what the relationship is between the data set and the article. So what we see in many cases is that the relationship is that the data set is referenced by the article or is supplement to the article, but um, the directionality can also be different and there are other relation types. Um, so that really depends on the actual relationship. 
Uh, and so if you do include these three fields in your uh, metadata deposit, then this information becomes available and uh, later in the webinar, Robin will talk a bit more about what that means. So yeah, I think at this point, I'd like to hand over to Patricia. All right. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about um, including um, data citations in the publication metadata. Um, some of you register with Crossref. Um, we have two paths for registering data citations with Crossref. You can include them as references. So many of you already register references. You include them in your metadata records that you send to us. Um, you can also include them in relations. Um, with relations, you can um, flag specific relations between DOIs and other items in your Crossref records. Um, and there are a few reasons why we support two methods. Um, we go to the next slide, thanks. Um, references are, are, cons are really, they're really kind of a type of relation. So they're all in the same bundle. They're both ways to associate a given object or metadata record with other objects that support that, um, that the content that's um, flagged in that record. Um, references are kind of the more traditional way of citing things in it, and we really consider it a best practice to consider uh, to can include data citations in your references. But relations allow you a little bit more flexibility. Um, you can include more granular types of relationships, we'll get to, which I'll get to in a bit. Um, you can also, if you've already registered, just on a practical level, if you've already registered your citations with Crossref and you decided to add in your data citations, you can um, kind of append relations to a record without having to re resubmit everything. So currently the most, I'd say, elegant and practical way to include a data citation in your reference is um, to just include a data site DOI that tells us everything we need to know. We're able to identify that as a data citation. You can also include um, more of a full text citation in your um, citations. Um, this is a good idea, it's particularly if you've um, flagged your references as being publicly available so that people can see the citation as, as um, you've included it in your uh, content. Um, in the future, um, one of the things we're struggling with right now, quite frankly, is sorting out what's a data citation, what's a journal citation, what's a book citation, et cetera. Um, when you have a, a string of letters and numbers, sometimes it's, it's hard for a machine to tell exactly what's going on there. Um, we're going to be expanding our citation markup to allow you to flag specifically what type of citation you're sending to this, uh, us. And this will have, um, this will help us um, match um, things internally. It'll help our, us pull out data citations to send to our event data service. And it'll help on another level with other types of citation because we'll be able to easily tell a journal citation from a book citation. And we're also going to take a look at what marked up metadata you can send us for those of you who are able to send us these uh, very detailed uh, marked up citation records. Uh, as I mentioned, you can also um, send data to citations as relations. Um, you can see the relation metadata here. It's very simple metadata, but it tells us a lot. This tells us that a data site is being cited, cited within an article, and the identifier used for that data set is a URI. There's no DOI in existence for this data set. Um, so the relations path does allow you to include other URIs, which is um, it's pretty valuable when you think about the number of data sets out there historically that may not have DOIs assigned. Um, you can also include a, a more uh, nuanced relationship type. Um, so the data, data set being cited in this metadata is um, generated as part of the article being registered, so it's included as a supplement. So we have the relationship type of is supplemented by. Um, 
not all of our members are, make those distinctions with data citations, but some do, and it is pretty valuable information if you're able to provide it. Okay, so just um, to summarize the benefits of both, um, if you provide a data citation as a reference, it's available via our metadata APIs if as a member you've elected to set your references to open. Um, re relations are also available via metadata APIs um, and those are just by default available. Um, so with references, citations with data site DOIs are sent to event data. Um, relations will be sent to event data in the future and that will include um, all of the identifiers supported within relations, which include DOIs and accession numbers and URIs. Um, in the future, for reference references, um, we're going to um, support the more nuanced uh, markup, which I think in the future will be the way to go for those of you who are um, able to mark up your um, citations that way. And, and then with relations, you can also supply the more nuanced references or is supplemented by relation type. All right, I think that sums it up. I think a lot of the publishers I've talked to are still in the very much in the planning stages for including data citations in the metadata they register with Crossref. So I encourage you if you do have any questions along the way to get in touch with us and we can help you think through some of these different paths and how and ultimately how you're going to send that metadata to Crossref. I think I'm ready to hand this over. Okay, thanks. Um, yes, so my part is all about how to get this information out. So we've heard a little bit from everybody else about why uh, data citation is a good ship to get on board and uh, why and how you can get your information into um, this event data service by feeding it through your usual cross ref and data site channels. And so my portion is really more about how to um, get this data out and sort of where we see this going in the future. So I have here uh, three steps for enabling data citations, sort of an overly simplified version. Um, so you can include a reference to a data set in your article metadata as you're submitting things to Crossref as a publisher, or you can include a reference to an article um, in your data set metadata that you submit uh, as a data site data repository member, um, and any other type of related, uh, relations between other items as well. Um, then these references um, between Crossref DOIs and data site DOIs or between two different types of data site DOIs or whatever are extracted from this metadata um, by Crossref and data site and we store this in the shared event data service and we make it available through our APIs and I'll talk a little bit more about those in a second. Um, and then where we see this going then is since this stuff is in an external service that is shared between the two of us, uh, then we can create new services on top of this and create updates of our existing services, such as uh, our various search interfaces um, that integrate with this event data information and can make um, better use of it a little more easily. We can also add a fourth step on top of this for sort of the, the more distant future as we get this stuff working out. Uh, we want to be able to work with the bibliometrics community in the future to better understand the data citation data that's provided via event data. Um, and help to develop uh, data metrics around this kind of stuff. Because at the moment, the kind of data we're providing is really just displaying what people have put in and displaying the data that is there. But as you'll see, as we talk a little bit about this, some of this data is kind of currently squishy because it's early days. And so we'll see how we can uh, make this into something more meaningful in the future. So a little bit about the event data service. We've sort of been hinting about this as throughout the presentation. This is a service that is being jointly developed uh, by Crossref and DataSight to capture references, mentions, and other things that we refer to as events about DOIs um, that are things that are not uh, usually explicitly captured in, uh, in, in the metadata about the DOI itself. So this can include references between uh, different DOI registration agencies. Um, and I should note that we use event as a very broad term. Um, so this does include uh, data citations, which is the uh, focus of this particular webinar today. But this also includes many other things, uh, such as social media mentions, um, usage statistics. There are a lot of other things we could include in event data. Um, so really, data citations is a small subset of those events. But there's plenty of other things we can include in the event data service as well. 
Uh, we're basically trying to provide a central place uh, where we can deposit and then later extract information about what your DOIs get up to in the wild once you've, once you've released them to the world. So this event data service, we believe anyway, is crucial for data citation going forward. Um, before event data service, um, any data citation information that you needed, uh, you would have to find within the DOI metadata as uh, different types of relations, relational identifiers. And this would be separate for Crossref and data site, depending on what type of information you wanted. So theoretically, you could have gathered some of this information yourself. It would just require a lot of uh, probably legwork on your part to, to search through our various uh, submitted metadata and find the information that you wanted and kind of match that all up. This doesn't really scale very well, and we think this uh, was, is partially responsible for limiting some of the adoption of data citation. So our hope then is that after event data, now that the service is available, um, the data citations are extracted into a separate service. Um, that is distinct from the uh, separate uh, cross-ref and data site metadata piles, and the data can be more easily found. Um, so we think this will scale better and will hopefully lead to improved adoption of data citation going forward, now that everybody can, can see what's in it in one, in one central place. So additionally, um, theoretically, event data could be extended to include other types of events outside of your usual article to data set relations. Um, and each side who's working on this has been uh, exploring some of our own areas with this that we think might be relevant for our particular audiences. So for instance, Crossref has been pulling social media information into event data, uh, like uh, Twitter and Wikipedia mentions. Um, and data site, uh, for our part, uh, we've been involved in a project called Make Data Count that's involving um, getting data repository usage reports um, submitted to us that we can then also put into event data as part of the events around separate DOIs. So the event data APIs. So we've talked a little bit about this shared event data service. So both Crossref and data site are contributing to the central event data service. Um, but we have two separate APIs for accessing it depending on um, on what it is that you want to do, because we've sort of tailored these for our uh, particular audiences. So Crossref has what they call the Crossref Event Data Query API. And so you can search the uh, same underlying event data hub uh, using a large number of parameters that are useful for, uh, for Crossref. And on the data site side, we have included the event data information in our newly updated REST API. Um, so we can, you can use this to query event data for uh, items that include a data site DOI um, and uh, other, we've also included a basic DOI metadata and some additional aggregations into this. And there are links on the slide for uh, the documentation for each API. So you can explore that and see what kinds of things might be best for you. Um, this is also uh, Scalix compatible, so data citations in event data are using the Scalix metadata standard. A couple other notes about the event data APIs. Um, both the Crossref and the data site API, uh, no matter which one you use, support querying by DOI or DOI prefix, date ranges, relation types, and various types of sources. Um, so for instance, uh, we have some different sources for these relations, such as um, a Crossref to data site relation, data site to Crossref, or just the data site usage statistics, for instance. Um, and additionally, as I, I'm, uh, because data site API includes additional metadata, um, you can also filter by content type through the data site API as well. So I have a couple of, of quick examples for you guys. Um, the first one is an example is if you had queried the data site REST API. Um, and I've truncated this a little bit. You would get additional information depending on what you searched for. Um, but I've kind of cut it down as the, the bare basics. So you see each event in here. This is the result for a particular event. Uh, each event has an event ID um, and numerous attributes. Uh, for each of these, there is at least a subject ID and an object ID. Um, so that is the subject of the relation and the object of the relation. Um, it tells you the source of where this came from. So this is a data site to Crossref connection. Um, it tells you the particular relation type ID. In this case, uh, the submitter of this uh, relation in the metadata used the relation type sites. And it tells you when this particular event occurred. 
um, which is typically something like um, uh, when someone submitted the metadata record that had this information in it. So in this particular example, um, the idea would be that the, the DOI with the subject ID cites the DOI with the object ID, and that's how this would look. For the Crossref API, the, it's relatively similar. Um, there's slightly different information. The structure is a little bit different, but it still has uh, some of the, uh, the basic information as you saw in the data site version. Um, so this is a slightly different example. So in this one, you'll see there is still the, the subject ID uh, and the object ID here. They're in a slightly different order. Um, it also tells you when this occurred. It gives you the source ID of, of Crossref and it tells you that this particular relation type is references. So again, the, the DOI and the subject ID references the, uh, the object and the object ID. And just from a quick peek, you can see that this is a, a Zenodo object ID in this one. So it's hard to tell what that would be, but that'd be another kind of repository item. Um, there are other things that you can do with the event data. API, you can uh, search for things by prefix and do some other interesting things. Um, but those are just some basic examples just to get, uh, get a general sense of what kinds of basic information you'd be able to find. If you dig through the guides we linked to earlier, you'll be able to uh, discover some other relations you can do and other types of aggregations and examples you can work with. So where do we want to go with this in the future? Um, the idea here is really to start building other services based on event data. Um, so uh, within Crossref and DataSite, we are looking at integrating uh, information from event data into our other services, um, such as, you know, DOI searches um, in DataSite. We also include it. Uh, we could include some information in some of our other services like Fabrica, possibly. Um, the other idea would be that uh, other organizations could potentially build on this as well. So third parties could build services based on the information that is provided by event data. So it would be possible also. And then um, there are other external projects that are that data site and cross are both involved in that would make use of this information as well. Um, so for instance, uh, data site and cross ref among some other partners are participating in a project funded by the European Commission um, to create what they're calling the PID graph. And this type of project would use event data to help show the relations between different types of persistent identifiers for articles, data, people, and all kinds of other things. So this is kind of where we see this going in the future, is being able to build services on top of the information that is contained within event data. And that's it for my part. I guess I'll turn it over to, to Rachel now to handle the questions. Yes, that is okay. my, that's, that's the job that I signed up for. Um, <laughs> But no, thanks, Rob, and that was, um, that was really useful, and to Helena and Patricia as well. Um, as anyone who's run a, a collaborative webinar knows, um, these things are, um, these things are, you know, easy, you know, these things are, have different levels of difficulty to pull together, but this one was, was actually fairly straightforward. So I can see that um, we've had some questions come in via the, um, via the chat window. So let me try to pull a couple of those out. Um, so I'm going to start from the top. Um, like one of the questions came in and um, to ask, with the two different types of um, the two different types of ways that you can cite, um, that you can add data citations to Crossref um, relationships and in the references. Um, we've got a question: um, if if you could supply both, if a publisher were interested in doing so, um, Patricia, do you want to take that? Sure. Um, yeah. So if there's no need to supply both, obviously, but if you want to, there's also no harm in it if it, it works for your workflow. Um, we've had that question before and we've, we've thought about it for a while and, and I think that it is, I think there's, when we're sending the data out to event data, it'll be sent twice because we don't really won't do any interpretation on our end, but people taking in that data will be doing interpretation. So I'd, I, I'd basically say no harm done if it makes things easier for you to supply both. Cool, thank you. Um, I can see that there's another, um, there's another question in the chat window. Um, Helena and Anne, I think 
you you guys are probably going back and forward on that um so i think we'll probably leave it for sort of a direct chat um one question's come in um asking um from an organization um, asking how they can make their data site DOIs findable in popular search engines like um, like Google Scholar. Um, I guess it's um, Helena. Do you want to do you want to take that? Yes, of course. Well, I mean, there's there's nothing you can do to make your data site DOIs findable in Google Scholar. But the good news is that data site DOIs are available in Google Dataset Search. Um, and uh, you can do some work there yourself um, to have Google Dataset Search harvest your own landing pages directly. But even if that's not the case, then um, just because you're using data site DOIs, um, these data sets will be available in Google Dataset Search as well. And if we can help you with anything around that, feel free to reach out. Cool, thanks both. Um, Paul, I also know has been dealing with um, some questions behind the scenes. Um, said if there are any more, you can pop the questions into the chat window or into the little Q and A window that um, that's provided via um, via the Zoom um, interface. Um, I've also, um, if and while you're thinking of questions, um, I've also just provided a slide with um, some links to um, to some of the things that we've referenced um, in the in the webinar today, and we'll send those out with the um, we'll send those out as part of sort of the package um, to attendees, so that you can you can grab those and um, and do some further reading if um, if you'd like. So I'm going to give it about um, about a minute more just to see if any more questions come in. Um, and if not, you if you don't have any questions, if we've answered them all, which I'm sure we have, um, then you're you're free to get on with your your morning, afternoon, or evening. Okay. So there's um, there's a question um, to come in about. Um, how many publishers have started working with this um, with this new system of, um, of data citation? Um, I will I will have a go at this one. Um, and Patricia, feel free to, to chime in if I'm getting it wrong. But I think, um, as Patricia was saying, I think it's sort of it's it's quite early days in terms of publishers actually you know of publishers actually getting to the point where they're. Um, where they're depositing um, data citations. Um, Using the using the relationship schema, I'll just have a quick look, and um, I'll just have a quick um, look at our API to see if I can find that out. I would say, with references, it can be difficult to say to see because certainly we've had a lot of um, a lot of publishers provide data site DOIs in their reference lists, and whether that's by virtue of the fact that they've just had that reference list from the author and they've just, you know, they've just put it in and they've deposited that with Crossref because that's what they do as standard or whether that's part of a sort of an active step to, to deposit um, data citations. Um, it, it, it's really hard to tell. Um, so publishers are getting started with it. Um, I know that some like um, Eli, for example, already do a pretty good job of this, um, but we're starting to see it grow pretty quickly as organisations see the, I guess, kind of the, the, end the, the, the end benefits of things like make data count, et cetera, actively starting to, actively starting to track this. Um, anyone else can feel free to jump in and add to that if you'd like. Yeah, I just, I just want to echo what you said, Rachel. Like, I, I found we don't, have a lot of publishers consistently registering data citations with us, but we're getting a lot of interest in it and a lot of questions. So I think that number is going to grow quite a bit, hopefully in the near future. Okay. Um, so, and then a question about um, if you, if I update metadata to add citations, after submitting it, does that automatically propagate to Crossref? Um, yes, is um, yes is the um, I think um, Anne, you're coming from the the data site side, but certainly from the Crossref side, if publishers come in 
and um, and add to their add additional information to their their metadata or their reference lists then that gets um, then that gets passed across again i assume the same in the data site side but um jump jump in if i'm wrong no that's that's correct um the question um so do we do we have a recommended format for citing data um in the references um i know certainly from the you know i know certainly from the the metadata side, like it, it's um, from the Crossref metadata side, it, it is it's really neat and nice um, just to get um, to be able to to be able to have the um, just the um, the the data site DOI in the in the, the metadata deposited with with Crossref. As Patricia said, that sort of really tells us everything that we need to know. Um, but you mean in terms of citing it in the say the reference list itself? Well, in that case, can I add that a lot of information about that is available in a data citation roadmap for scientific publishers. The the DOI is, is on the screen right now. So that would be a good resource to look at if people want to see some examples of how data should be cited in articles. And a quick question. Um, are there initiatives dealing with the issue of academic credit for data citation, data citations? Does some does something similar exist, like the indices for journal publications? Um, again, I would say that it's sort of fairly early days with this, but there are, there are initiatives like, um, so I think the first step with this is, um, the first step with this is actually getting the information to a point where we can reliably track and see data citations. But certainly there are initiatives there are initiatives like um, Make Data Count, for example, um, which is starting to um, which is starting to to track and quantify and display um, data citations. Um, Helena, again, I think um, there's um, there's a paper coming out hopefully soon enough, and um, that talks a little bit about that. Um, but you can go to the Make Data Count website and read a little bit about the read about the that initiative and what they're trying to do in order to try to kind of track, um, display um, and display data citations to, to make sure that, um, that those are visible and researchers can get credit for them. But I think in a way the answer is yes, there are initiatives, but I think there are no real answers yet. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a topic that's of great interest right now and many people are thinking about it. And there are some initiatives that are starting to count, such as Make Data Count, but there's also still a lot of bibliometrics work needed to really decide what meaningful data metrics will look like. So I think for data, we're not at that point yet, but there's a lot of work happening. Yeah. Um, and is, is, there, is there a list of data repositories that support data citations and data sets to articles? Um, again, um, Helena, I wonder if this is kind of similar to the, I guess, I guess it's something that you'd be able to see. Um, maybe there's not a list of data repositories, but you could see within using the, um, you could see using the data site API if there are, um, which, which data repositories are sort of actively linking to articles. Yes, exactly. In, in event data, we can see which, which data repositories are, are including that information and making that information available. Um, and maybe this is for everyone. Do we see the element publication type brackets data becoming more prevalent in the style guides of publishers? Um, I, 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 I think so, and I hope so, and I think that's sort of part of the um, yeah, I, I, I think so. And I think it is part of, as you said, just um, like one of the kind of roadmap steps of just making it really clear to, to authors how they, can, how they can sort of explicitly pull out citations to data so that they're as easy to work with as possible.
Cool. Okay, I think um, I think the kindest thing to do for everyone is to finish up with about kind of um, 10 minutes to spare. We'll pull everything together and send it out to attendees. Um, but I think for, from, um, from all of the panelists, um, we'd like to thank you um, for joining the webinar today. We hope that you find it useful. And if it said, if you've got, if you've got follow up questions, et cetera, um, please feel free to get in touch. Um, but yeah, um, thanks again.